So far, we have seen a little bit of how this MOSFET behaves. But the question is, what makes it behave like that? What's inside this uh, MOSFET? Let's begin with a block of P-type semiconductor, lightly doped, a microscopic one, like this one. And in that one, we will carve not one, but two wells like so, and we'll fill them up with heavily doped N-type materials, one here and one there. And look what we're going to do on top of that. On top of each one of those N wells, we will deposit a layer of metal. The black um, material here is metal. One here and one there. On top of the center, we'll deposit a layer of insulator. What kind of insulator? Silicon oxide. An oxide. That's right. And on top of that, metal. And then we connect the source, the gate, and the drain. By the way, at the bottom of that body, we connect another metallic plate and a fourth terminal, the body, that very often is connected together with the source. Observe the width of the material and this length L that is highlighted. Let's have a look at a cross-section of that, like so. We observe the source connected to the metallic plate on top of that N well, the drain connected to the metal plate on top of that N well on the right hand side, and the gate completely insulated from the channel region to B. Mm -hmm. What do we do with that now? Observe. Now uh, let's ground the source. Let's connect the source to the reference node and let's do the same with the body. If we apply a positive voltage to the gate like so, that positive voltage will scare away the holes in this region between those two end wells, like so, creating a depletion zone. Still, uh, there is no electric charges for the conduction of current. But if we increase that, VGS, the voltage of the gate above the source, to a minimum value that is high enough, a minimum value that is V threshold, something wonderful would happen. That positive voltage of the gate will begin to attract the electrons from the two end wells into the channel region, and a channel is born. So this EMOS doesn't have a channel of conduction until we apply a VGS voltage that is sufficiently high. Please observe that if VGS is below that threshold voltage, there will be no channel, there will be no current between the drain and the source. Now, let's consider that is a situation we apply that voltage. VGS is above the threshold voltage and there is a channel. Because there is a channel, we say let's pass a current from the drain to the source like this. Fine. Well, that current will produce a voltage gradient across the channel, same way as in the JFET video, and will modulate the width of the channel like so. If we keep that voltage of the channel VDS at a reasonable value, let's not make it too big or it will pinch off the channel. No, let's keep that below this overdrive voltage. If that is so, we say we have a variable resistor between the drain and the source. Let's repeat that. If VGS is above the threshold voltage, that is, if there is a channel and conduction, and the channel voltage VDS is positive, all right, but is less than how much higher above the threshold and the gate to source voltage is what we call the overdrive voltage. If those two conditions apply, if the channel from drain to source behaves as a variable resistor and VGS controls the cross-section of that channel, the cross-section that is traversed by the current in its journey from drain to source, we have a variable resistor. The conductance from drain to source is given by this expression. Observe uh, that conductance is indeed a function of the gate to source voltage VGS. Sure, it also depends a bit on VGS, but that dependence will consider that secondary in our first approach. 
the current to drain source will be just the product of this conductance times the channel voltage in VDS line. So conductance times VDS, that is the current in the channel. Well, that current, if we were to plot it as a function of VDS, would look something like a parabola. Observe, it's a quadratic dependence on VDS. Indeed, that is the current in the channel as a function of the channel voltage drain to source. It grows as almost a straight line. But as that voltage VDS gets closer to what? Gets closer to 3 in this graphic, that curve slopes get smaller and smaller. It peaks at VDS equals the overdrive voltage. Well, let's recap. If two conditions apply, if there is a channel that is VGS is above the threshold voltage and the channel has not been pinched off, that is the VDS voltage is below the overdrive voltage, then the drain to source channel behaves as a variable resistor that depends on the VGS voltage. Let's see graphically where we are. This is the full output characteristic of this MOSFET. In it, we observe three regions of operation. When VGS is below the threshold voltage, there is no channel and the drain current is down here, zero. And this line represents the behavior of the transistor when VGS is below the threshold voltage. We say the transistor isn't cut off. But when that voltage VGS is above 0.5 or 1, 1.52, then we are in one of these two regions, the gray or the blue one. In the gray one is where we've been operating in the previous slide, the region in which the transistor behaves as a variable resistor between the drain and the source, a resistance that depends on the value of V gate to source. We call that the triode region of operation of the transistor. Two conditions, VGS is above the threshold voltage and second, VDS, the channel voltage, is below the overdrive voltage. When VDS is exactly the same as the overdrive voltage, we have this boundary in dashed lines here, which by the way, it's also a parabola. When that voltage VDS is above the overdrive voltage, we enter the cold saturation region in which the MOSFET works as an amplifier that depends, its current depends on the value of VGS and not on the value of the voltage in the channel. That is called the saturation mode. In it, the drain current depends on the overdrive voltage, or rather, on the VGS voltage because the overdrive voltage is VGS minus a constant VT. And if VGS is less than VT, then we are cut off. Those are the three modes of operation. Triode region, saturation region, and cutoff region. Okay, but who is Kn? Let's introduce what is called the electron mobility in the channel mu sub E. So it's a coefficient that tells us how easy it is for electrons to flow around in the channel. And also introduce the oxide capacitance, COX capacitance. Yes. Observe in this graphic when we applied a voltage in gate source, there was charged deposited right below the plate of the gate. So you can think of this. Um, device here as a capacitor between the gate and the channel. That's what we call the oxide capacitance. The more capacitance we have, the more electric charges we have in the channel for a given volt that you apply to the gate to source. And we introduce also the aspect ratio of the transistor. Width divided by length. What width and what length? This one. The width of the channel this W divided by the length of the channel. Oh, okay, what do we do with that? The conductance coefficient Kn is proportional to each one of them, to the mobility of the electrons in the channel, the oxide capacitance, and the aspect ratio W over L. 
The units are amperes per volt square. Now, how do we use the MOSFET? Well, we can use it as an amplifier in its cold saturation mode. Observe that the name is different from the one we had for BJT. For a BJT, saturation means the transistor is operating as a closed switch between the emitter and the collector, right? Well, not here. For the MOSFET, saturation means the transistor is working as an amplifier. For digital applications, we switch the MOSFET between on and off. We set it in cutoff mode when we want it to be off, or we set it in triode mode when we want it to be on. We go from triode mode to the cutoff mode and vice versa. Now, what we have here in saturation is a voltage controlling a current. This voltage controls this current. That's right. You say, what about the other current? Well, this current is zero. Anyway, we have a current source that is controlled by a voltage. Let's have a model, a representation of this MOSFET that works in DC, what we call the large signal model. That's simple. The gate current is zero, and the output current, the drain current, is proportional to the overdrive voltage squared. Overdrive voltage who? This overdrive voltage defined as how much above the minimum voltage that creates a channel the gate to source voltage really is. Some conditions apply for that model, right? For us to be able to use that model, first VGS should be above the threshold voltage, right? Second, the V drain to source voltage, the channel voltage, should be above uh, the overdrive voltage. Let's say those two conditions in English. The conditions are there has to be a channel, and secondly, the channel has to be saturated, pinched off, if you will. Let's summarize what we've seen. The characteristics of a MOSFET are given by two constants. Those are the conductance coefficient Kn in amps per volt square and Vt, the threshold voltage, the minimum VGS voltage that creates a channel of conduction between the drain and the source in volts. In that circuit, the current Ig is always zero and we say the first thing we do is determine what is the gate to source voltage and what is the drain to source voltage. This one down here and this one, this one over here, all right, okay. If this voltage VGS is below VT, we're in cutoff, and the current ID is zero. What current? This current is zero, cutoff, right. We are down here. VGS is below VT, and the current ID is zero. Else, that is, if VGS is above VT, that is, we have a channel, we have to compute the overdrive voltage easy and then we compute vds and we compare that with the overdrive voltage if it's below the overdrive voltage this one vds something happens if it's above something else happens let's go back if it's below we are in triode mode if it's above we are in saturation mode which is working we are working with it as an amplifier we are either in the gray region or in the blue region Triode mode on one side, saturation mode on the other. In triode mode, the conductance depends on the overdrive voltage, like so. And the current in the channel is given by this expression. We've seen that. If it's in saturation mode, then the current in the channel, I do, ID, this one, depends on the square of the overdrive voltage, this overdrive voltage. In saturation, ID is proportional to the square of the overdrive voltage. It is a function of VGS, indeed, because of the definition of the overdrive voltage here. And that is a summary of that behavior. Triode mode, saturation mode, cutoff mode, and down here. We want it to be an open switch. We are down here in cutoff. We want it to be a closed switch. We are in the triode region working as a variable resistor. We want it to work as an amplifier. 
we have to be in the saturation region. Tutorial time number four. Consider this circuit. We do not know the values of those two resistors, RD and RS. We don't. We have grounded the gate. It is connected to the reference node. And we have a positive negative power supply. 2.5 volts on the top, negative 2.5 volts at the bottom. We are given the transistor. It's an NMOS transistor. That N means it is an N channel MOSFET. That's what it means. And the symbol is telling us that it is really an NMOS. The transistor is specified by its threshold voltage 0.7 volts. Uh, so the product of the mobility times the oxide co uh, capacitance is given 100 microamps per volt square. And we're also given the length of the channel and the width of the channel in microns. What we need to do is compute RD and RS. What else do they tell us that the current in the channel is 0 0.4 milliamps, 400 microamps flowing that way. And also that this voltage VD with respect to the reference is half a volt. You say the voltage here, this one, this current is 0.4 milliamps and this voltage is half a volt. Well, that's easy to determine RD. We know the voltage on the top, the voltage on the bottom of the resistor, and the current through that. Ohm's law. That resistance is 2.5 minus 0 0.5 divided by the current, that is 5 kilo ohms. One down, one to go. If we only knew Vs, we could apply the, the same procedure to the computation of Rs down here. Hmm, can we compute Vs? Let's see, let's see, let's see. Well, we know Vg, it's zero. If we knew VGS, automatically VS would be negative VGS. Uh, that's right. Compute VGS and from there we determine VS. Okay, if we assume the transistor is in saturation observe, we're making an assumption, we have to prove at the end. And then this formula is true that drain current is proportional to the square of the overdrive voltage. VGS unknown minus VT. VT is 0 0.7 volts. That's right. And this current, this current is known, is 0 0.4 milliamps. Good. So we have one equation and only one unknown. It's a quadratic equation. Mm, we have the conductance coefficient, 3.2 milliamps per volt square. And we enter that equation into the calculator. Let's see. This is the current, this is Kn, that is Vgs minus 0 0.7, which is Vt squared. We push the F5 button and we get the two solutions to that quadratic equation. Mathematically speaking, Vgs could be either 1.2 or 0 0.2 volts. But please observe, now use your engineering know-how. If VGS cannot be 0 0.2, because if it were 0 0.2, it would be below 0 0.7, and there would be no channel and no current. The current would be 0, and we are told that the current is definitely not 0. So that means that this second value is impossible. VGS has to be 1.2. That's right. VGS is 1.2 volts. Excellent. That one, we have that. We say VS is just negative VGS is negative 1.2 volts. Now we have the voltage here as negative 1.2, the voltage on the other side of RS, negative 2.5. We can use Ohm's law. RD is negative 1.2 minus minus 2.5 volts divided by 0 0.4 milliamps, that is three and a quarter kilo ohms.